Hi, and welcome back to another lesson. Today we're going to talk about diminished major 7th chords. Now, a diminished 7th chord, like this C diminished 7, is a chord which is made out of uh, three um, minor 3rd intervals. So starting at C, I take 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3. That is three minor 3rd intervals and I get a diminished 7th chord. A diminished major 7th is one in which the final interval is not a minor 3rd, but a perfect 4th, which has 5 semitones. So, I would still have the lowermost 3 notes, but then I would count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And would get a C diminished major 7th chord. The way to remember this is, maybe it's easier for you, think about a C major 7th chord and then just take the 3rd and 5th and lo lower them by one semitone. Now diminished major 7th chords have a pretty interesting and somewhat unusual sound. It has a bit of dissonance because of this interval in them. And they have several uses, which I'm going to sort of go over in this video. First use, which is really kind of simple, as, is as a precursor to the uh, root chord. So if you're in the key of C major, and you want to, you have a chord progression and it ends with a C major 7th, you can precede it with a C diminished major 7th chord. And you'll hear this in a lot of jazz tunes. So you'll hear my, may, maybe something like this. So that's already one interesting use for the diminished major seventh chords. Sometimes, by the way, some pianists actually don't resolve the diminished major 7th to the major 7th chord. Uh, they just sort of let it hang there and end the song with sort of an unresolved tension. So that's an artistic choice which I'll leave up to you. Now to examine some of the other uses of the diminished major 7th chord, uh, let's just play a little tune. So I'll first of all just play it and then I'll go over some of the places where the diminished major 7th chord was featured and sort of discuss its uses. So there were, were actually uh, quite a few of these uh, diminished major 7th chords in this progression. Let's first of all go over it and spot them. The first chord is a C major 7th chord. Now, this is a B flat diminished major 7th chord. Which resolves itself to an F major 7th chord which then goes to a G-sharp diminished major 7th chord. Then goes to an A minor 7th. And then this goes to a C diminished major 7th chord. Which resolves to a G dominant 7th sus 4, which then resolves to a G dominant 7th, 
and then we have an F diminished major 7th chord which resolves to a C major 7th chord. So why do these chords work? And it turns out actually that there are several different answers uh, to this. But the kind of bottom line lesson you can take from this progression is that you should really learn to experiment and play these uh, diminished major seventh chords in all keys, so you know. Just learn to identify them and sort of get a hang of their sound and transpose them. So you'll sort of get, uh, first of all, develop the ear to identifying them and then just try them out in your songs. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to the question of why do these chords actually work, quote unquote. Well, the answer in many of the cases has to do with the fact that, let's, let's look at the C dominant seventh chord. And this is made of a C, E, G, and B flat. And as you know, or maybe you don't, so I'll tell you now, the most important notes here are the E and the B flat, which are the third and flat and seventh. So these really define the sound of your dominant uh, seventh chord. Now, if I were to build a diminished major seventh chord on either the third degree or the flat and seventh degree, I would notice something very interesting. So let's first of all build it on the third degree. This is an E diminished uh, major seventh chord. And as you'll see, or as you see, it really has three of the notes of the C dominant seventh chord. Uh, and most importantly, it has the third and the flat and seventh, and it also has a tension. This can be thought of as a sharp nine. This would be a nine, and this would be a sharp nine. So when you're playing this, you're really playing a C dominant seventh with a sharp nine. And this can substitute for a C dominant seventh chord. Of course, depending or you know, depending on whether the sh this tension doesn't collide with your melody. Let's do this again, but this time build our diminished major seventh chord on the flat and seventh degree. So if I were to build it on the flat and seventh degree, which is a B flat, I would build a B flat major seventh, which looks like this. Now, this also has a B flat and an E. And it also has, in addition, a flattened ninth and a thirteenth. So really what I'm playing when I'm playing this, the B flat diminished dominant seventh, is I'm playing a C dominant seven with a flat and ninth and a thirteenth degree. And this sort of explains, you know, these, these two ways of thinking about the chord explains actually why this works. And let's go back to the progression and I'll walk you through it. We start with a C major seven. Then we had this B flat uh, diminished major seven, which resolved to the F uh, major seven. Now, again, we remark that this is actually, this actually can be thought of as a C dominant seventh, which resolves to an F. So really, what you have is sort of, we're really playing what's known as the secondary dominant of the F major seventh chord. Or in other words, we're leading from, we're starting with a C, going to a C dominant seven, and going to an F. And this is sort of a, a well-known trick in jazz. You can proceed uh, pretty much any chord with a dominant chord, which is a perfect fourth below it. So that's really what we're doing here. Now, the same thing sort of happens here, where we have this G sharp, uh, diminished major seventh, which results to an A minor seventh. 
And here we can think of this as built on the third degree of an E dominant seventh. Now an E dominant seventh is the secondary dominant of the A minor chord. Uh, it's like a 5-1 progression. We have a, an E going to an A minor. But instead we choose to play this. So you see how either building, either you, you know, you can you can actually think of this as really built on the third degree of an E major seventh chord, or you can actually also think of this as you know what is this the seventh of, and this is the, the flattened seventh of a B flat dominant seventh. So this thing can either be thought of as an E dominant seventh or as a B flat dominant seventh. Now the next chord or next chord pair was this which really was again what is this this is really a D dominant seventh or with this addition with these additional tensions we also have a D dominant seventh sharp uh, sorry flat nine with an added 13th. So this is really a D dominant 7th chord, which resolves, again, it's the secondary dominant of the G. And the same thing goes for this. Why does the F diminished dominant 7th uh, works? Well, and work? I mean, why does it resolve well to the C major 7th? Well, again, we can think of this as built on the seventh degree, or the flattened seventh degree of a G dominant seventh chord, which then leads to a C major seventh uh, root. Now this works equally well on minor keys as well. So, you know, you could have and you can substitute, well, really you could take this G dominant seventh and play either uh, the diminished major seventh on its third degree or try to play it on the seventh, flat and seventh degree. Uh, and it actually works pretty well on the third degree here. And again, we can also do this. So here I was doing an F minor 7th going to a B flat dominant 7th, but really I was playing on the flats in 7th degree and then resolved to the E flat dominant a major 7th, which is the 1. So I was playing a 2 5 1 really. One more. Uh, use out of this. Uh, let's look at, I mean, uh, one one additional way you can use these diminished major seventh chords is as a substitution for a regular diminished seventh chord. So any, anytime you see a chord like, let's say, an E flat diminished seven, you can try and substitute it for uh, an E flat diminished major seven. Now this might or might not work depending on whether this tension uh, actually 
fits in with the melody, but then really it uh, amounts to how well you know how to use your diminished chords. And of course, I'll, I'll, I have a video on this already, and I'll probably have at least another one because they're such interesting chords. Uh, but the point is that if you know where to use diminished seventh chords or diminished chords in general, you can try to substitute them for a diminished major seventh chords. I recommend that you actually just practice them, first of all, well, of course, learn, learn to play all of them. Uh, it's kind of interesting to play them in jumps of thirds. You know, start with, say, let's say, a C diminished major 7, uh, jump to the A, to the F sharp, uh, E flat, C again. And you can also add this, just double the topmost note. And again, go down by a uh, minor third. Uh, so you'd get, and again, because it's a sort of a nice dissonant sound. Uh, another way to think about this is really what you're playing is this major 7th interval, which is kind of dissonant really when you think about it. And then you're just adding these extra two notes in the middle. So if you learn to recognize these intervals in your playing, sort of also learn to recognize and add and play these diminished major seventh chords. That's it for now. I hope you've learned something interesting and I'll see you next time.